developments, I think that call for urgent uh, action and discussion. Recently, government has been making announcements about state-owned enterprises in a secretive manner. We, earlier this year, saw an announcement by IDC on Zesco where they were looking for a consultant to see how Zesco could be reformed or could invite um, equity partners or could be unbundled. We've seen the actions that have been taken on Mopani and KCM on Mopani. They've invited Rothschild, uh, a firm from UK, to do the evaluation. We don't know how much they are paying these firms. KCM, the liquidator, has invited the South African bank to also help with operations and give consultancy on the firm. Then there are these isolated announcements, such as the sale of ZCCMIH shares in Kansanshi mining, the matter that the nation has been gripped with. The other day, we saw an announcement that Ndola Lime, a wholly owned subsidiary of ZCMIH, is being put on sale. And Ndola Lime, you know, is very critical to the mining sector because of the lime products that it supplies. And it has a huge reserve of about 30,000 um, metric tons of mining reserves. It's been put on the market. No debate, a small advert in the Times of Zambia where you and I may not have an opportunity to see. We have heard from the Ministry of Science and Technology about Zamtel and their plans on Zamtel that they wished to uh, have some future about Zamtel. When the president was in the United States, you saw he met uh, Starlink officials, a company owned by Elon Musk, and they said they'll connect with a company in Zambia called Fibercom. This is, uh, again, uh, a subsidiary of Zesco. All these announcements appear isolated, but they are not. They are coordinated. Because of our history, Zambians are very sensitive to issues of state-owned enterprises and what government wishes to do with them. Um, just let's back up a, a little. Between 1964 and 1968, the Zambian economy was almost totally private, except for a few, the electric company, the railway company, the water companies, the majority of the companies were run by the private sector. Came 1968, Dr. Kaunda says, look, we don't have economic independence, we have no control of our economy. He embarked on major reforms, you remember, the Mulungushi reforms, the material reforms. All these reforms were designed to get Zambia and Zambians to control the economy. So, up by 1980, up to 80% of the economy was now public, owned by government through public enterprises, famously called uh, parastatals. But we saw the inefficiencies of parastatals. We, we, we saw their dependence on raw materials that were imported. We saw the inefficiencies as associated with the state-owned enterprises, I think, culminated by 1990 with a huge debate whether to take these state-owned enterprises back to the private sector. By 1990, there were over 325 state-owned enterprises in mining, in agriculture, uh, in, in trading, in transport. The entire economy was literally owned by state-owned enterprises and the inefficiencies to the economy were associated to uh, uh, these parastatals and, you know, the financial outlays that uh, the Zambian government was using to bail out and sustain some of the state-owned enterprises brought this debate that probably the economy should be run by the private sector, that it should go to a market economy, market-oriented, and we needed to liberalize the economy. The government of President Chilwa embarked on one of the most ambitious programs we've ever seen in the economy, where now they decided to offload all these 325 companies, including the mines, to the private sector. Well, you and I, when we review, it's been a disaster. Totally a bigger disaster than when the, when the companies were run by government. And uh, there are a few isolated state-owned enterprises that are still thriving, that were bought off and are still thriving, like Zambia Sugar, Zambia Breweries, Chilanga Cement. These are isolated good cases out of the 325 companies that Zambia 
you know, sold, privatized, liquidated, whatever the, the, the modus was. But the point is, by 1997, I think President Chiluba had recognized that you needed to have a stake in, in, the, in the economy. You just can't offload the entire economy to the private sector. I think they were looking at models in China, they were looking at models in Russia. Even in Nordic countries, we still have state-owned enterprises. One of the most successful uh, uh, parastato in the world is CDC, a, a company owned by the British government. So there was a real look that, look, these experts must have misled us. They used us as a guinea pig to test these economic theories. These young boys from IF and World Bank literally used Zambia as a guinea pig to try out all these models under the structural adjustment program. Hence, where we are now, we remain with some state-owned enterprises. At the moment, we have 34 companies that are owned under the IDC. Some we are major shareholders, others we are investees. We've invested in such companies. Some of them include Zesco, Zamtel, you know, in the energy sector, uh, in the banking sector like Zanaco, um, uh, Indobank, we have some shares and the, private uh, the public banks that were created for purposes of civil servants. We still have Zafico, we still have, uh, uh, under other sectors, we still have uh, uh, these companies. So there are 34 companies currently owned by IDC. And this then brings us to the issue with government. What is your policy on these state-owned enterprises? Are you going to sell them off? Are you going to invite um, equity partners? Are you going to... Uh, 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 keep them, we want answers from government. What is our concern? Is that this government doesn't seem to follow any legal framework whatsoever. You know, in 1990, what the government of President Chiluba did was very simple. They decided to establish a legal public process. So they created the Zambia uh, uh, Public uh, Act, the Zambia Privatization Act, sorry, which created the Zambia Privatization Agency. And then there was a laid down procedure to follow how to dispose of these state assets. There was a tranche, you know, they were classified in seven tranches depending on the sector and the size um, of these companies. So there were seven tranches. So companies were grouped in these seven tranches of what needs to be sold now, especially the smaller companies like UBZ, you know, AFE, and other smaller companies. Then there were the large ones like Zesco, ZCCM, the mines, uh, that were then in the last tranche because they wanted to see how the process was going. Then there was an economic evaluation done to the companies, so experts, consultants, were all called upon, were engaged to now do the evaluation of these companies before ZPA could advertise and propose to sell them. And even when the evaluation was done, again, these processes were taken to cabinet for, for approval. And when an advert was done and companies were invited to bid, we knew how much value those assets were. At least we had an idea of how much it would cost. By the time the Minister of Finance is signing off for a sale that has taken place of state-owned enterprises, it would have gone through this entire process. This is lacking in this government. There's no process in place. We don't know what legal framework they're using. And let us remember that in, 19, uh, in 2016, in the you know, build up to the draft constitution that, that became the constitution, there was one burning issue. How our state-owned enterprises were disposed of in the 90s. Zambians felt cheated, Zambians felt robbed. They recognized the high unemployment rate that we now suffer is as a result of that process we undertook. They understood that our manufacturing sector, our industrial sector, look at Ndola, a huge industrial town, today dead, dead. Look at even Lusaka industrial sector, dead, dead. Look at Livingstone, look at Kitwe. So our people said, not again. Government will not be allowed to sell 
our prized possessions without our say. And what did government do? They set up, the people of Zambia set up in that new constitution, Article 210. And Article 210 of the constitution clearly stipulates how government should procure and how we should dispose of state assets, especially major state assets. And these are defined as shares in a company that government has, actual companies that government totally owns. These are parastatals and state-owned enterprises. And any major asset of value, it has prescribed how this should be done, that government ought to take their proposal, their intention to sell these shares, to sell these companies to parliament. And government has to obtain a two-thirds majority. We have not seen that in government. Government has not taken their intention on consumption. You had the Minister of, uh, of Finance and Minister of Mines, the two ministers simply laid out a procedure they are taking without consulting Zambians, without consulting parliament, without obtaining two thirds majority. The article 210 states that before you dispose of any shares, our shares in Kansanshi mine is 20%. The economic value is substantial. You just can't sell them in the manner that they are proceeding, where you think you can just negotiate the two of you with first quantum and change ownership. In fact, the article is very clear. Whether it's transfer of shares, like the conversion they are doing, whether it's outright sale, whether it's outright disposal, you require two thirds majority. We have not seen this by this government. Hence our concern. You clearly have these 34 companies that we have, and we have other companies that the Zambian government has invested in. What is your, what is your role, government? What legal framework are you using? Your colleagues under the MMD laid out a clear procedure. They created an act for the disposal of the assets. They established an agency to sell. The process was public and Zambians were following. Remember, we even created the Lusaka Stock Exchange because there were many modes in which the privatization was done. Others were outrightly sold to other companies, local or foreign. Some assets were offloaded on the Lusaka Stock Exchange where people bought, bought some shareholding. Some were management buyouts with other partners so there were mechanisms and the process was laid out and procedure was known and the process was public. Don't you wonder that uh, the MMD government managed to dispose of these major huge assets of the Zambian government without a riot, without protest. The, the clear guideline there was that they were working with the Zambian people on their major decisions. This government is not doing that. You have to look for the information. What is their stance on Zamtel? What is their stance on Fibercom? What is their stance on Zesco? What is their stance, for example, on the major shareholdings that we have in the mining sector? We now hear that there are plans to sell Kasenseli gold to a Canadian firm, a Canadian firm represented by a former president of uh, 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 of South Africa, Kalema Montlante. These are very serious uh, developments. Can this government put on the table what they're doing? Can they work with the Zambian people on what they're doing? Do they intend to sell these assets? And colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I thought we could discuss this matter. Clearly this is an ongoing matter and it's not going away. Uh, we'll find time to discuss the debate around uh, the oncoming uh, load shedding. I'm already suffering for, uh, from load shedding and my broadcast has been affected by that. We'll discuss everything from the Southern uh, Power Pool, Southern Africa Power Pool, where the, uh, Zambia is selling its power, to which countries we are selling power to, how much we are getting from these uh, contracts. We'll discuss entire load shedding and whether Zambian government should suspend it's uh, power exports. Will it affect the power purchase agreements they have with these other uh, uh, countries? 
let us discuss that next time. But as we wind up a recap, the Zambian government ought to tell the Zambian people what they're doing with these state-owned enterprises. The decisions they're making have no legal backing, have no legal process, and have not involved Zambians. It's not a matter just for a minister. It's not a matter just for the CCMIH. These assets, it's not a matter for IDC. It's just not a matter for the Minister of Finance. These are major, major assets of our country. And our country has gone through a traumatic period where we lost 325 companies, where we, our country was deindustrialized, we lost the manufacturing sector, our industrialization stalled, we've started a process to industrialize our country. Why should we be made to walk through this path? The process of privatization just made a few people rich, a few companies rich, but Zambians were bankrupted. Zambians lost the industrial base they had. So with those few words, hope to see you next time as we discuss Zesco and Lord Shedding. God bless you. God bless our country. And God should make this country prosper. Thank you.